Hello everybody, hello, welcome back to the Dugout Football Channel and it is time for match week number 5 of the 2020-21 Premier League season. If we had anything like the last match week, then we're in for more unpredictability in this Premier League season. It's been so unpredictable, there have been some high scoring games as well. Uh, but last week, well, let's just say nobody saw Tottenham beat Manchester United 6-1. And Aston Villa beating Liverpool 7-2 as well. Um, so, how did everyone do? Well, let's just have a wee look. Uh, so, I, I I, didn't do very well. I got I got six outcomes out of ten. Uh, so, that gives me six points. Wasn't a very good week at all. Um, so, but uh, top scorer, and I have to say, I have to give you absolute credit for this, is Diego C. Palace, who got 11 points I have to say that's absolutely fantastic uh, for you to get eleven points because you got lead, you got three perfect scores. So I think that I think that that's absolutely fantastic. Um, you got Leeds Manchester City correct, you got Southampton West Brom correct, and you got Arsenal Sheffield United correct. Um, and the other outcomes you got Everton Brighton and Newcastle Burnley as well. So very very well done for you uh so that that was that was really really good um the league table i have managed to update the league table and this is how it stands at this moment in time so i did all the i did all the sort of the predictions for the for the weeks in september and this is how it is at the moment so at and first place is shane o'donnell with 26 then it's me on 23 screen boy 8 and bluebird legend on 22 russell uh bland from eat sleep united repeat he's on 21 uh diego chris welsh roberto sir klopp are all on 20 points reese russell uh 17 Kean on 15, Balam on 15, Nathan uh, Morgan on 14, and James Harlow on 12. So that is that is the table right now. So very, very well done to everyone who has uh, entered as well. But if we have the unpredictability of, the, of match week four, here we go. Here's match week five. And the first game to preview and predict is probably the most eagerly anticipated Merseyside derby uh, for a long, long time. Everton against Liverpool. And the last five between the sides have resulted in three draws and two wins to Liverpool. That could all change this week. And the last result was a nil-nil draw between the sides. Well, at Everton, uh, first of all, well done to Carlo Ancelotti. Well done to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Uh, manager and player of the month for September. Thoroughly deserved. Really, Everton have been absolutely fantastic. And, um, you know, they, they go in. Um, still question marks over, you know, Jordan Pickford, it has to be said, uh, because Brighton, to their credit, they gave Everton a good game. Um, Pickford managed to, you know, get Brighton back into the game with a really bad, bad error again. But, you know, they've signed Robin Olsen now, and he's going to, you know, test um, Jordan Pickford, so... Pickford knows that he's got a bit of a competition there for sure, um. But it was a very good one, and Calvert Lewin again scoring, scoring for fun recently, scoring for fun for both club and country. Uh, James Rodriguez was very, very good as well. So really, really good. Liverpool, well, well, well. Who saw seven two coming? Who saw that coming? I don't think anyone did. To be fair, um, poor performance. But I have to say, credit goes to Aston Villa. They were. Brilliant, really, really good. I thought um, from start to finish they they took advantage of some really slack Liverpool defending. It was very, very slack uh, as well. Gomez had an absolute shocker as well. Uh, but Liverpool will be boosted by the return of Thiago Alcantara, Sadio Mane as well, but are without Naby Keita as well. Naby Keita has been the latest Liverpool player to test positive. So it's not looking good for Liverpool. There's also talk that apparently they are in talks with Jack Butland, which would be very interesting. So we'll wait, watch that one for for sure. Um, is he better than Adrian? Look, Jack Butland has had a bit of a a, a torrid time at Stoke. It has to be said, but um, he he was a very good goalkeeper uh, at a point. So that be interesting to see. So what is my prediction for this game? Well, believe it or not, I never predict Liverpool to lose. But the way that things are going right now, 
I think Everton will get their first Merseyside Derby win in 10 years. Yes, I'm I, I'm actually saying that. I think Everton will win this one. Everton 2, Liverpool 0. I am going to say Everton will win the Derby. I'm going to say it now. They're going to win the Derby. Um, I've just got a feeling that, 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 that they're going to. They're in very good form. Liverpool not in great form at the moment. I know the Villa result is a freak result, but Liverpool never seem to tend to lose uh, consecutively under Jurgen Klopp. I've got a feeling that this game might be a little bit too far for Liverpool. Need to defend a lot better for sure. Uh, but I'm going to go for a 2-0 win to Everton. And it pains me to say that, but I'm going to go for a 2-0 win to Everton. Chelsea against Southampton now. The last five between the sides have resulted in three wins to Chelsea, one draw and one win to Southampton. And the last result was a 2-0 win to Southampton. Um, Chelsea, very good win against Palace in the end. 4-0 uh, winners in the end. Ben Chilwell getting his first goal for the club. Um, Jorginho getting a couple of penalties as well. Uh, so it was a very good performance from uh, from Chelsea. Uh, the only thing I'll say though, without Matteo Kovacic, they do look really unbalanced in that midfield. I have noticed that for a, a wee while actually. Um, Kante is is a very very good player. There's no doubt about that. But if if uh, Kovacic is not in that team, then I think they are a bit unbalanced. And I, you saw that with uh, you know how well Chelsea played in the second half. They brought Kovacic on. And it was a very, very good performance from uh, from Chelsea. So, really interesting that, actually. But, uh, yeah, it's just something I've noticed for, uh, with Chelsea as well. Southampton, very good win against West Brom. 2-0 winners in the end. Uh, yeah, Oreo Romeo getting on the score sheet, which never happens either. Uh, but, um, but, no, it was a very, very good win for uh, for Southampton. So, they'll go to Chelsea in a bit of, bit of confidence for, uh, for sure. Really tricky one to call this one because Chelsea, as I've said, um, they have blown hot and cold recently. Um, but uh, at home, I would expect them to, to to win this one. I think Chelsea will win this one. Chelsea 2, Southampton 1. I'm going to go for a Chelsea win, but I think it'll be a very tight game. 2-1 to Chelsea. Leicester City against Aston Villa now. The last five between the sides have resulted in four wins to Leicester and one draw. And the last result was a 4-0 win to Leicester City. Well, Leicester City were on the back of a 3-0 defeat to West Ham United. Really, really surprised result, that one. Um, just didn't turn up on the day. West Ham, to their credit, uh, you know, they they marshaled Jamie Vardy out of the game really, really well. Yes, Vardy missed a, uh, basically a, a chance to, you know, get a goal, but it has to be said, I thought West Ham played very, very well against Leicester. And do you know what? It's going to be a really, really intriguing game because, as I've said, Leicester City are coming up against Aston Villa, who must be on absolute cloud nine right now, but full credit to Aston Villa. Ollie Watkins getting a hat-trick. John McGinn looking really, really good. Ross Barkley as well. Ross Barkley is a big, big signing for Aston Villa. He will keep uh, them in good in midfield for sure. Looking very, very good for Aston Villa for, for sure, but... I have to say, I thought Aston Villa were terrific against Liverpool. And, uh, yeah, because of that, uh, the way this, this season is going to go, there are going to be some unpredictable results. And um, this is another one. I'm going to go for a wee shock here. I'm going to go for a, a Villa win against Leicester City. Yes, a Villa win against Leicester City. Leicester City 1, Aston Villa 2. So we'll see what happens for sure. But, um... Yeah, Leicester City 1, Aston Villa 2. Newcastle United against Manchester United. And the last five between the sides have resulted in two wins to Newcastle and three wins to Manchester United. And the last result was a 1-0 win to Newcastle United. Well, it has to be said, Newcastle United, very good performance against uh, Burnley. Alan St. Maximum was incredible. Um, if you don't if you don't mark him very very well, then you know you, you're going to be on the end of of something very very special from Matt Maximum, and he was fantastic. He was really really good. Callum Olsen getting a goal as well, really really good to see as well. He he seems to be the striker that they've been badly needing as well. Um, Steve Bruce will be confident going into this game because as I've said, Newcastle United are really really um 
playing very well under Bruce, actually. It has to be said, it's a very, been a very good start to the season uh, as well. Uh, I think it's, I think it's uh, two wins, a draw and a defeat. It's not been a bad start for um, Steve Bruce and Newcastle. But uh, they're coming up against Manchester United, who, it has to be said, there is turmoil at that club right now. There is absolute turmoil. Um, talk that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is close to being sacked as well. Pochettino possibly coming in as well. Uh, in my opinion, it should be the other way around. Ed Woodbridge should be getting the boot because he was the one who failed to get the targets that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needed. Um... He's just look. He's 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 incompetent at, at the best of times. But this would be a really bad move, I think, for Manchester United. Yes, Manchester United were absolutely terrible against Tottenham. Um, Anthony Martial is suspended. Edison Cavani, new signing, will be um, not playing in this game either. He's he has to quarantine uh, as well. So that's another one you have to say for sure. But dear me, it's not been not been a great week for uh, Manchester United and. Um, you know, the transfer business, it hasn't been good either. So, looking really, really um, intriguing because I think this game could be the one that actually decides uh, Solskjaer's future, I think. Uh, the way the Manchester United are playing. I can only really see another Newcastle win. And I'm actually going to go for a Newcastle win. And I'm going to go for the same scoreline that they did last season. Newcastle United won. Manchester United nil. I do think Newcastle will win this one by a goal to nil. Sheffield United against Fulham now. The last five, uh, the, actually, there's only been two meetings in the Premier League era, and it is one win to Sheffield United and one win to Fulham. And the last result was a two 0 win to Sheffield United. Sheffield United getting a, they were unlucky. I have to say they were very very unlucky against Arsenal. Played played very very well. Um. Got the late goal as well. So they managed to score a goal. That's that's the main thing. Ryan Brewster will be available for this game. Will he make his debut? It will be really intriguing to see. Um, Sander Burge was pretty fortunate, I thought, to stay on the pitch against uh, Arsenal for attack on Aubameyang. It did look really bad, actually. Um, so you have to say that that is a very, very good, uh, you know, very good um, thing to say that, you know, Arsenal did get the win, but Sheffield United played really, really well in that game, and uh, they'll be they'll be they'll be pretty confident because they're coming up against a Fulham side who were on the end of a a very narrow one 0 defeat to Wolves. It wasn't the best of games, it has to be said, but Fulham did give Wolves a few problems in that game, and um, this is the thing with for, for Fulham now. But um, I I can only really say a, a Sheffield United win. I really can. I think Sheffield United will win this one. And I do think that uh, Brewster might get on the score sheet. We'll see see what happens. But uh, I'm going for a 2-0 win to Sheffield United in this game. I do think Sheffield United will score uh, a couple of goals. But I'm going to go for a 2-0 win to Sheffield United. Uh, West Brom against Burnley now. The last five between the sides have resulted in two wins to West Brom, two win, two draws, and one win to Burnley. And the last result was a 2-1 win to Burnley. Well, West Brom coming off the back of a 2-0 defeat to uh, Southampton. I do. Th I actually think that they played well. They pl did play well. Um, they're back in the, uh, the Hawthorns, so they'll be pretty pleased about that. Um, but you have to say that West Brom are, you know, getting getting better and better. It'll be in interesting to see how well they do, because they uh, they are coming up against Burnley, who it has to be said. Well, credit to Sean Dyche for keeping Dwight McNeil and James Tarkowski. You would have thought they would have been probably on their way out, but they're not. So that's that's one thing you can say for sure. But the one thing I will say is that Burnley are looking a shadow of themselves right now. Yes, they've not started the season well. Yes, they are they are struggling to score goals. Um, but it's really, really worrying as well. So with that being said, uh, with West Brom, okay, they did lose against Southampton, but performances have been better. They have been having better performances. I'm going to go for them to get on the right side of a result this, this, this week. West Brom 2... Burnley won. Going for West Brom to get their first victory back in the top flight. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm going for a 2-1 win to West Brom. Uh, 
Manchester City against Arsenal now. The last five between the sides have resulted in five wins to the Citizens. And the last result was a 3-0 win to Manchester City. Um, Manchester City. What can we say about them against Leeds? Um, poor. Could have probably won the game um, as well. Sterling got them off to a flyer. Um, Ederson looked really, really poor, really shaky as well. It was his mistake that led to Rodrigo getting the equaliser. Um, but you have to say it was a wonderful game of football to watch. Wonderful game of football for a neutral to watch for sure. Um, this this uh, this crazy uh, you know attacking presence from both sides was fantastic to watch. But um, I have to say it's going to be a really interesting game because you know Man City are not in the best of form. Arsenal coming off the back of a 2-1 win over Sheffield United. Big, big injury worry though. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has picked up an ankle injury with Gabon. So he could miss this game. Which could mean the likes of maybe Alexandre Lacazette getting a, uh, another start. Maybe Eddie Nketiah getting a start. It could, could be an interesting one for sure. So we'll see what happens. But I think... It's going to be a, a really intriguing game, but I'm going to say Man City will bounce back with a win. Man City have got a great record against Arsenal, it has to be said. But Mikel Arteta did win the last game between the sides, and that was at Wembley as well. But I'm going to go for a 3-1 win to Manchester City in this game. I do think Man City will win this one. I do think they will win uh, the game and I'm going to say that uh, Kevin De Bruyne will be all better for sure but I'm going to go for a 3-1 win to Manchester City as well and now we have a derby game for Super Sunday it is Crystal Palace against Brighton and it is not not uh, not too much between the sides you have to say two wins to Palace two wins to Brighton and one draw and the last result was a 1-1 draw between the sides um Crystal Palace on the back of a 4-0 defeat to Chelsea last game in, game out. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a disappointing performance. Um, Wilfred Zaha didn't look his best, it has to be said. Um, Sacco being Sacco, conceding penalties, it was really, really poor from Sacco. Um, but you know what? He is that kind of defender. He is rash, but he is a good ball-playing centre-back. And unfortunately... You know, Crystal Palace um, had to lose um, 4 0 in the end, which is a big, big defeat, to be honest with you. But they'll be pretty pleased they're back in, uh, at Selhurst Park, for sure. Uh, Brighton, um, in the end, it was, you know, 4 2, 4 2 to Everton. But you have to say, they scored the best goal of the game with uh, Basuma uh, scoring a fantastic goal to, uh, to win the game. Uh, to um to get the get the goal, but I have to say I'm looking really really um forward to this one because as I've said, derby games are so unpredictable to predict as well. But I'm gonna go for a I'm gonna go for a draw in this one. I I do think both sides will cancel each other out. I do think also that uh, Brighton are improving under Graham Potter. I'm going to go for a 1-1 one, one draw between Crystal Palace and Brighton. I'm going to go for a 1-1 one, one draw in this game. And we've got a London derby as well. Tottenham against West Ham. The last five between the sides have resulted in three wins to Tottenham. One draw and one win to West Ham. And the last result was a 2-0 win to Tottenham. Well, Tottenham, what can you say? 6-1 against Manchester United. Very, very good from them. Harry Kane and Son looked really, really good. Good to see Aurier on the score sheet as well. Um, once Gareth Bale comes into this team, I think Tottenham are in for a good season. I, I really, really do. Yes, Europa League might be a bit of a problem, but what you can say is that they've been very, very good recently. Jose Mourinho will have enjoyed that victory. There's no doubt about that, but... Uh, Tottenham, to their credit, they, they were very, very good attacking-wise, and Manchester United just capitulated at the back. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, I thought Eric Lamella was very lucky to stay on the pitch against Manchester United. Um, had Martial around by the neck, and then Martial retaliated very, very silly as well. So he deserved a red card, but Lamella should have gone as well. So that, that that's one thing you can say for sure. West Ham... Uh, well, they've got they've came off the back of a three 0 win over um, Leicester City, and they are rumored to be signing Ben Rama from Brentford, which would be a fantastic signing 
for West Ham. Uh, West Ham were just in very, very good form right now. Since Alan Irvin, uh, you know, has taken charge of both games, they've scored seven goals, could conceded none uh, as well. But really, really intriguing that. So David Moyes will probably be back in the dugout as well. So we'll see, see what happens in this game. But uh, for this game, I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Spurs. I think Spurs will have too much for West Ham. I'm going to go for a 2 on one to Spurs. And the final game is Monday Night Football, and it is Leeds United against Wolves. And they've only played twice in the Premier League era, and that is 1 win to Leeds and 1 win to Wolves. And the last result was a 4 1 win to Leeds United. So it shows how far that they've these two sides have come. This is going to be a very good game, I think. Leeds United, a very good draw against uh, Manchester City. Really, really unlucky not to win the game. I thought they were the better side in that game as well. But as I've said previously, they it was a fantastic game to watch. Rodrigo looks like he's getting back to his uh, you know his, his best. Bamford looked really really good as well. Melie Melie is it Me is it Melie? How I don't know if it's a, a silent S, but Melie and in, in goal for Leeds was very very good as well. They are looking really really good, Leeds United, and uh, very tricky to beat. It has to be said. Wolves are coming off the back of a one 0 win over. <coughs> Excuse me. They're coming off the back of a one 0 win over um, Fulham, and it was a very very good performance from them. Um, uh, Podence getting the goal as well after a good save from uh, Raúl Jiménez to for him to be denied, but uh, Podence wasn't to be denied, and that was a goal for Wolves. And it's going to be a really intriguing game because, as I've said, Leeds United have got a decent record against Wolves uh, in the Premier League era. So I'm going to go for a, a Leeds win in this one. Wolves don't lose too many times, but I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Leeds United. I do think Leeds United will win this game. 2-1 to Leeds United. So that is it. That is match week five done and dusted. I will go for my predictions very, very quickly as well. So starting from top to bottom, Everton 2, Liverpool 0. Chelsea 2, Southampton 1. Leicester City 1, Aston Villa 2. Newcastle United 1, Manchester United 0. Sheffield United 2, Fulham 0. West Brom 2, Burnley 1. Manchester City 3, Arsenal 1. Crystal Palace 1, Brighton 1. Tottenham 2, West Ham 1. And Leeds United 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1. So that is it. That is Match Week 5 done and dusted. If you are, uh, if you do like this uh, predictions, then please leave your predictions in the comment section down below. And like Diego C Palace, you will get a shout out in the next video. So, what what will we see this game week? Will we see more unpredictable results? Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I've been a bit bold in my predictions, as you can see. With, uh, with a couple of those games as well. But uh, if you are new around here, then please hit that subscribe button, smash the like on this video, and remember to leave your predictions for match week five, and we will see what results will happen uh, in these games. So the live games uh, this week is Everton against Liverpool. That is on BT Sport. And then we've got the... So we've got a few three o'clock games, uh, has to be said, and they are on pay-per-view uh, as well. Man City Arsenal is live on Saturday Night Football. Crystal Palace Brighton is Super Sunday, as is Tottenham West Ham, and Leeds United Wolves is Monday Night Football. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Enjoy your Premier League weekend. I think it's going to be another unpredictable week, but we'll see what happens, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye for now. Thank you for the support recently. Cheers.